This recording contains language and themes of an adult sexual nature. The language is graphic and is not intended for persons under the age of 18. A reading from Blood Slave by Travis Ludke. Hope, a telepath, is a Colombian escort living in the ghettos of Spanish Harlem. She just finished having sex with her client, an Asian woman named Leah. I pulled my hand out with a wet plop sound and a grunt from Leah. She had wet my whole forearm. She's one of those women who squirt like the ones in the porn films. The smell of our sex permeated the room. As I walked to the bathroom to wash up, I passed by the mirror and stopped in shock. A thin line of blood ran down my neck. You bit me! Look at that! I pointed at myself in the mirror. That is so gross. I freaked and ran to the bathroom. I could feel the warm blood running down my shoulder under my breast. Shit! I rummaged through the medicine cabinet for the hydrogen peroxide. I found it and the triple antibiotic with shaking hands. Who knows where her mouth had been today? She was eating me out a few minutes ago. Before I could begin to wipe up the blood, she was on me. Wait, let me take care of it. It's my mess. I'll clean it up. Then her slimy, wet eel tongue snaked out and, and licked from my breast all the way up to my neck. That girl had skills with that tongue. She could take that tongue on the road and make some serious money in a carnival freak show. Then it hit me, and my stomach turned over in flip-flops. She loved it. I tasted like a syrup-covered ice cream cone to her. She'd happily lick me all night long if I let her, as long as I kept on bleeding. Ooh, gross! Oh, God, that's so nasty! I almost lost it right there. I actually gagged for a second. Barely swallowed it down. I have this kind of obsessive-compulsive thing about cleanliness, and blood is definitely unclean in my book. Blood-borne pathogens, diseases of the blood. Hospitals treat it like a damn biohazard. Leah snickered at my gross-out reaction like it was all some joke. But she couldn't hide the fact she wanted more. The freak actually thought she was a vampire. Then she got really weird. She stared intensely without blinking. I sensed her trying to somehow take control of me with her creepy stare. The chick was really weird, a little too weird for my tastes. The sex was fabulous, but I couldn't deal with that blood thing. That's just straight up sick. I might be an escort from a third world country, but I do have standards. She kept staring at me, had been staring at me for some time. Then she spoke in a weird, commanding monotone. Tell me your name. The sad truth is I didn't really want her to be a stranger. As odd as it sounds. I wanted her to come back, and not for the generous tip. I uh, wanted more of those screaming orgasms. I'm not normally a screamer, but uh, she had a way of bringing it out of me. So, uh, against my better judgment, ignoring the creepy aspects of everything that had gone down so far, I gave her what she wanted. My name is Hope. I've never told anyone in America my real name, Esperanza Salvacion just sounds so ugh, south of the border. Hope has a nice ring to it, one syllable. 
Maybe I delude myself into believing that if I can drop my Colombian accent, employ flawless English, and use the name Hope, I can somehow rise above my humble beginnings. Leah started in on me with that eerie command voice. Hope, you will not remember our meeting or this conversation. You are feeling tired. You feel like sleeping. You need to rest. Shit, this was getting old fast. I get it. You don't need to repeat yourself. I'm not stupid. I've been doing this a long time. I know the score. I'll never tell anyone you were here. We've never met before. Yada, yada, yada. I know the routine. Leah didn't care for my attitude. She came at me again with that same monotone crap. You will not remember our meeting. We have never met before. You will not remember that I bit you and tasted your blood. Oh, brother. Whatever, whatever. It was gross, but don't worry about it. I'm not going to say anything to anybody. It didn't happen. This is our little secret. I respect your privacy. Actually, uh, I uh, was hoping you might want to see me again. I'd given this speech to dozens of cops, businessmen, politicians, <laughs> even a priest. Everyone who's someone of importance out in the community needs reassurance their freaky romp with an escort will remain confidential. I'm not into blackmail or extortion or anything stupid like that. It's nasty business that never ends well. I've seen it done to by the cartel to others less fortunate. Plus, being an illegal, it wouldn't be hard to get me deported. She didn't look pleased. I tried to put her at ease. You already gave me a $200 tip, so I'm cool and... I really would like to see you again. She started looking at me funny, her head turned sideways like I was the freak. I dug into her mind to, to see what the hell. She'd been come extremely irritated over something. You're a special kind of girl, aren't you? She was trying to defocus her vision to see something else off to the side of my head, some kind of hazy color spectrum. Yes, you are. Her voice trailed off. She flipped like that into a raging bull hatred. She pegged me with this totally wicked, I want to kill you and dance on your corpse look. You bitch. You're digging around in my head, you bitch. I caught it a split second before she hit me and I reacted. I flinched quickly, stepped back out of her reach, except she hadn't moved. Gotcha, didn't I? I knew it. Her lip curled into a snarl. What? What's your problem? Then I finally understood. She'd been trying to hypnotize me into ignorance. When she realized it wasn't working, she began to suspect I had some kind of psychic sensitivity, a telepath or a clairvoyant. I had just proven her right by reacting to her thoughts rather than her actions. Staring at me with her head cocked sideways, she recognized something about this weird color she thought she could see, something yellow-gold in my aura, and that decided it for her. You already know way too much about me, don't you? She had this half-smile, but it didn't reach her eyes. I, I have no idea what you're talking about, and, and I think it's time you should go. I presented her a dilemma. If I couldn't be hypnotized into forgetting I had read her mind, what to do with me? 
the thought came to her instantly, a toothy grin slid across her face. She would probably have to kill me to contain the situation, 